Hi, I wanted to uh, thank everyone and thank Interop for inviting me and uh, working with Dr. Casper and Dr. Rabin. Thank you very much. Um, we wanted to go cover the uh, financial aspects. If you want to switch the slide, please. So here's our disclaimer. We're presenting uh, the information as it is today. Our, um, the things change in radiation oncology reimbursement uh, month to month. Uh, and year to year, definitely. So we're presenting it as it is today from the proposed rules for 2021. Next slide. Our disclosure is um, we work with quite a few uh, radiation oncology centers from universities to small little uh, freestanding centers in the middle of nowhere. And we work with a number of people. We're kind of uh, uh, we work with vendors, we work with centers, we, uh, we're not, I'm not being paid for this talk and everything we're presenting is the property of Interop. Next slide, please. And support all of your societies. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, our firm a little bit, uh, SRT, which we're going to discuss and the rules around it that have changed in the past three years. Uh, and return on investment in SET, coding and documentation, and return on investment. Next slide, please. So our firm is 38 years old this year. We only work in radiation oncology. We have consulting services, reimbursement training. We have a billing division that does billing. We offer certification and education and certification in radiation oncology. Uh, next slide, please. So we're going to talk about orthovoltage superficial or superficial radiation therapy. And actually that terminology started about five years ago because SRT and the Europeans still use it as stereotactic radiotherapy for stereotactic radiosurgery. The name was changed in the U.S. for skin treatments back about five years ago. Next slide, please. So here's the main code, the treatment code for superficial x-ray. And the bold part is all the codes you cannot charge in conjunction during a course, not just when you're billing the 77401, it's during the entire course of treatment. None of these codes can be billed. Uh, next slide, please. And this is out of the federal, uh, these are the codes very few that you can build during a course. Usually there's about 10, 12 fractions with uh, uh, orthovoltage or superficial. You can charge the industrial visit, the dose calc, simulation, the treatment, and then visit codes. And that's pretty much it for uh, superficial treatment. Next slide, please. And here, this is from the Federal Register where they state uh, at the very bottom that all of those codes that were bolded um, cannot be reported when furnished in association with SRT, which means the course of treatment. And next slide. This is from Evacor. We actually, our company reviews Evacor's guidelines and reimbursement. Some things we don't agree with, some things we're okay, but we mainly approve the codes and how they use them in uh, their radiation business management with other insurance companies. And they follow with the Federal Register that in the middle paragraph it says these codes cannot be reported separately during the entire course of treatment. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the codes I already showed you uh, the procedures. So there's a simple simulation, complex simulation, orthovoltage uh, in the new patient and follow-up visit. And we put all these together with about 20 patients being treated per day or 250 new starts for the whole year if you were doing Medicare. And you can see the professional would bring in about 150,000, 272,000 technical. And if you were billing globally, the total amount would be 420,000. Uh, next slide for the ROI, please. So the machine costs right around 450000 And you really want to look at the technical portion because the professional portion pays the uh, 
physician, the radiation oncologist, and the technical, a lot of it pays for some of the physics services, which there are none billed in superficial, and your return on investment uh, in about a year, treating 20 patients a day is about 1.65 years or a 60% return on investment of 272,000. Next slide, please. Now, uh, Dr. Brabham already talked about Linax and electronic beam therapy, and I think one of the questions to, that was to Dr. Casper was, do you have any problems getting reimbursed? Electron uh, beam therapy for skin cancers is decades old. The insurance companies, I don't even think they question it. It's been done for so long that it's pretty much the standard of care. Next slide, please. So here's the uh, treatment delivery codes for hospitals. Uh, it's very strange in radiation oncology, hospitals bill one set of codes and doctors' offices bill another set of codes because no one could agree back in 2015 and 16 how they were going to split up the pie with the brand new codes being developed. So the 77412 is if a hospital was billing uh, electron therapy. Next slide, please. The codes here, 77413, which is uh, 6 to 10 MEV, which is what electron treatment, the interop machine provides. The 77413 was invented back in 1992, so it's been around quite a long time. And in 2015, that code was deleted. The definition remained the same, and it was changed to a G code for office-based practices to build Medicare and federal-based payers, and most all the other payers as well, the Blue Shields, Aetnas, Cygnas, et cetera. Next slide. So we took um, the, uh, Dr. Brabham said that there were two types of fractionation schemes. One was 22 fractions and one was 32. So as you see on the treatment code, we put in the average of 27. So we didn't use the highest, we didn't use the lowest, we just used an average. And this is the same uh, number of patients as the uh, superficial 20 patients per day and 240 new patients. But as you can see, the technical is close to $2 million and global 2.2 million and the uh, professional component is 371,000. So let's look at the ROI based on 20 patients per day. Next slide, please. And here's the return on investment. So we're looking at a $1.5 million investment, but the amount of uh, reimbursement coming in if they were all Medicare, and of course, non-Medicares pay higher. So your Blue Cross, Blue Shield, et cetera, pay more than Medicare. And so the return on investment would be 0.78 years on the technical or 128%. Uh, return on investment as a percentage. And let's take a look at 40 patients a day on the next slide. Uh, we're going to take a look actually with a hospital. So if you were in a hospital and the big LINAC that Dr. Bradham showed you, the amount of income, hospitals are technical only. So their technical payment rate for the 240 new patients per year would be a little higher, almost 2.2 million. And next slide, please. And I just wanted to show you this for an example. So the hospital return on investment would be a lot quicker, 0.69, based on 1.5 million uh, facility equipment cost, or 145% uh, return on investment. Now the next slide is 40 patients, about 480 new patients per year. And it doesn't seem like you at the villages there's any shortage of patients there. Um, so the, uh, we still use the 27 treatment fractionation scheme, and we come up with 3.8 million in the technical, and then 743,000 on the professional. And if we switch over to the return on investment slide, that would be uh, 0.39 years uh, payoff bringing in about four, treating 40 patients per day or 480 new patients per year at a 256% uh, return on investment. Uh, next slide, please. 
So in summary, ortho-voltage and superficial reimbursement codes, well-established, been around long decades. They're used by hospitals, freestanding clinics, dermatology offices, non-invasive skin cancer treatments, less reimbursement because of bundled payments. Um, healthcare providers supplying uh, or utilizing superficial electron therapy are set. The uh, patients are treated ethically, legally, but higher reimbursement because there's absolutely no bundling of payments. Next slide. And that's it. So if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Great. Thank you, uh, Jim, very much. We're just taking a look at the Q&A here uh, for questions. I do see a couple. It looks like there may have been some that joined late or missed part of the presentation. So I'm going to date this. Dr. Brabham, are you still on? Because I think there's some questions for you as well. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, I believe there was one about reimbursement earlier, Jim, and we already answered that one. So I think we have that one covered. Um, and then there's one that says, uh, what is the dose fractionation used for a T1 SCC? Uh, sure, I, I can answer that. Um, it depends on where it's located. Um, the less cosmetically sensitive, the more uh, the more quickly you can go uh, in terms of area in the body we're talking about. Uh, but if it's on the uh, nose or on the face or on the scalp or on the uh, pretibial area, generally we will do uh, 64 gray and 32 fractions for those lesions. Um, occasionally we will speed it up or if it's on an ear or um, a neck or something that's not quite as sensitive, we will go a little faster and do 55 grade and 22 fractions. Uh, those are two most standard. We don't do that 100% of the time, but um, if I had to pin me down and answer, that's what I'd say. Okay, thank you. All right, there is a question uh, coming in for you, Jim Hugh, as well. Why can you use the 77321 and others? Uh, well, the 77321 is the plan for electrons, and generally we just bill for electrons, the electron plan. And I don't know what others mean, but I think the dose calculation is uh, bundled into the 77321. So if there is no electron plan performed or documented, then you could build a dose calc instead in lieu of the electron plan. But most electron treatments, we build the electron plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, looks like there's one more. Let me just look at this one quickly. Do you think, Jim, that bundling will happen? Um, well, definitely bundling will happen. Uh, they're working on the RO model right now where they're going to mandate that 40% of the providers of radiation in the U.S., uh, they will be bundling the, the, the professional component and the technical component. But when we just gave our proposed rules a webinar yesterday and the actual RO bundling, which at the final rule was never published, and that probably won't go into effect in July of 2022, but only for 40% of the providers. And the technical portion is actually higher with the one uh, with the flat rate payment than it is if you build all the code separately on the technical side, which was very interesting. But I don't foresee any bundling in the next uh, two years with uh, electron treatment. Okay, thank you. Uh, looks like there's a couple more. Okay. 
I understand that there are dermatology practices that perform and charge for repeated simulations during treatment, such as using like ultrasound for image guidance. And I presume you believe that this is not appropriate. Um, yes, I agree that it was not appropriate. In um, normal radiation oncology, we have an initial sim set up to set up the patient. Then on the first day of treatment, we would have only one sim for verification of the next 22 or 32 fractions. So you would generally only have two simulations per course of therapy, which is the standard across the U.S. Okay, thank you. There is one more coming in. Um, okay, great. This is great. Thank you all for all the great questions. Uh, what about the coding for SRT with ultrasound added? Um, there, it would only be a simulation but you really can't build simulations every day no matter what type of image with uh, a simulation can be a clinical setup where there's no images when you first set up the patient, and then you take an image to make sure that blocking is covered, uh, the critical areas that it's, you're treating where you think you're treating, and it's just a verification. So the utilization of ultrasound, um, uh, if, it, if it in fact is uh, ordered medically necessary and benefits the patient, it still could only be billed one time. Thank you. Okay. And then I think here is the final question. Uh, do you, and I believe this one's for Dr. Brabham here. Um, do you do a computer plan uh, for the electron treatment? Um, no, the computer, the um, electron plan is a, uh, a 2D calculation and that's actually uh, generated um, at first by Interop's uh, own software that they provide the machine. And then we do an independent um, external software um, hand calc to verify it, uh, but there's no uh, 3D plan associated with it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Jim, for your presentation and all of our speakers. I believe that concludes the questions. Uh, we will download these questions. So if we see that we missed any, we will uh, follow up with, with those of you uh, who've been listening in on today's webinar.